This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at an affordable name brand Android tablet. This is the Acer Iconia A1. This is the Dash 830 model. That's the newest model. Intel Atom dual core inside, 8 inch display. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Acer Iconia A1. This is the Dash 830 model. There's a couple of different A1s out there. It can get kind of confusing. This is the newest kit on the block. 8 inch IPS display here, 4 by 3 aspect ratio like the iPad, that's pretty uncommon in Android tablets. The less exciting news is the resolution, 1024 by 768. This is not meant to be a high-end tablet. This is not like the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro 8.4, which has a phenomenally high 2560 by 1600 display, but it also costs less. The, the Samsung costs, well, you know, $399. This guy here is about $200. So we'll forgive it. However, there is a lot of competition in the budget segment from the likes of the Amazon Kindle Fire HDX, for example. But here you get full Android. You don't have to hack it to, to get access to the operating system in the normal Android experience. You get a GPS with GLONASS. You get a 2 megapixel front camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. So it's more of a general purpose Android tablet. And for that, well, then it starts to look more promising, doesn't it? Of course, there is the Nexus 2013, Nexus 7, that is. And that's 229, and you get a full HD display there. So, you know, a little of this, a little of that. We do get the rear camera on here as a selling point. Uh, the point of it really is at $200, usually you're looking at budget, no-name kind of tablets. You know, the Panda Rock Mark II, whoever makes that, whatever that is, that you're going to find somewhere in Walmart and may or may not be a very good product. This is a name brand company. This is Acer. You get what you pay for. Everything works. They have warranties, all that kind of stuff. So that's the idea behind this tablet. Obviously, this is the white model here, and it has a... Not hugely inspiring, silver background, kind of generic looking as it is. Not horrible, not great. A little white up here. Kind of reminds me of the HTC Flyer. There's a design that we've seen being copied for years and years, and that's actually a nicer design element. Stereo speakers down here. Obviously, you're not going to get as much separation as if there was one on each end, but still reasonably good placement if you're holding it in the middle and watching a movie in landscape kind of mode here. You're not going to block them too much. White strip up here, no doubt, is for looks and also for the antenna. Wi-Fi in here, single band, not dual band, 802.11bgn. Bluetooth 3.0, not 4.0. Not exactly cutting edge on the specs there. GPS with GLONASS, and that's pretty nice. You don't always see that in a budget kind of tablet. Unusually speaking, the micro USB connector is up top, not at the bottom. Go figure. Use that for charging and if you want to transfer stuff to and from your computer. 3.5 millimeter combo headphone microphone jack there. And there's a built-in microphone hole right there. On the side we have our volume controls and our power button. And a little bright silver ring over here. Breaks up the monotony. SD card slot compatible with high capacity cards. That's a nice touch. 16 gigs of internal storage here. So if you want to carry a lot of media with you, you're going to want to put it on that SD card. Nothing on the other side. Fairly clean look. Weighs just over three quarters of a pound. It's 13.2 ounces, making it, you know, kind of average for the 8-inch tablet. Not super light, not incredibly heavy either. Since this is an IPS display, viewing angles are pretty good. That's supposed to be a selling point of the display. Uh, it's not wildly bright. Right now we have it close to maximum brightness. It's adequate for indoor use. It's not really great for outdoor use. One thing I notice is the touch is not very responsive. Sometimes I feel like I have to hit kind of hard, especially closer to the edges of the screen. That's unusual. We don't see that much on a tablet. If you're playing games where rapid touching is very important, that could be a deal breaker. You'll get used to hitting harder on it, I suppose, though. The tablet runs Android 4.2 Jelly Beans. Sorry we don't have any 4.4 Kit Kat here. So not the latest, greatest, just a little bit behind at this point. And it's a fairly vanilla or clean implementation of Android, which is nice. No heavy skins on board. We have capacitive on-screen. Sorry. We have on-screen buttons over here. No hardware touch buttons. That uses up a little bit of your screen real estate. Fairly fast for scrolling. 
And as you can see, that, that's pretty close to a Nexus-like look there. It, it's pretty much just basic standard Android going on. They do load some stuff on here, Wild Tangent games. You have McAfee, Antivirus, which honestly you really don't need so much. A couple of Acer utilities for remote file access. All of the Google stuff is on here, unlike the real budget tablets that are maybe 100 bucks or so and aren't Google Play sanctioned. This one is. So you have all the Google apps like YouTube Player, Gmail. You can use the Google Play Store and download apps to your heart to content. So full Android on board. This is running on Intel Atom Clover Trail CPU. That's a little bit unusual. We don't see that too often in Android world. And I have to say, in general, so far, they haven't been quite as zippy as, say, the, the Qualcomm or Tegra-based ones. I don't think the optimizations are quite there for Intel yet. But this one is not too bad in terms of use and application launch times. So that's the Clover Trail Z2560. Again, 1.6 gigahertz, not the sharpest knife in the drawer as... as uh, our benchmarks are going to tell us for Quadrant, it scored 6,085. Now compare that to almost 15,000 for the faster Android tablets, and well, there you go. You can see what it scored on 3D Mark. This is the Extreme Test, 6,104, which is again about a third of what we see on the fastest Android tablets. Uh, but then again, you know, what are you doing with your tablet? If you're mostly doing web social networking, looking at photos, playing some streaming video, it's adequate, honestly, you know. Real Racing 3, it plays, and we'll show you that. You know, some of the, the top 3D games, though, you really want a faster CPU on it. For Antutu, it scored 18,305. Geekbench 3, 443 for the single-core test, 916 for the dual-core test. Sunspider, the WebKit test. We use this on the WebKit web browser. You get both Chrome and the standard WebKit web browser here. WebKit's usually faster, 996. Fastest devices are more like 500, so you get the idea. But then again, a year ago, tablets were scoring almost as high as 2,000 sometimes. Lower numbers are better here, so in the relativity of things, not that bad. So how about video playback? Here we have the on-screen keyboard up, by the way, so you can see it, and that's just the standard basic Android keyboard. Useful, basic. You can put your own keyboard on there, of course. Then we'll go to our website, Mobile Tech Review, and we'll test out video playback using one of our video reviews. And we'll look at our video of the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro 10.1. And browsing speed is perfectly adequate. You don't need the world's fastest CPU in there to have decent browsing speeds. Pretty loud device. for a small tablet, but you hear it distorting. Aluminum. We know that with the other pro devices that we've reviewed, so it's not quite that fake chrome look. It looks a little bit more really like metal. Very light, just a hair. I mean, a smidgen over a pound, so as light as the iPad Air. Very few 10 inch Android tablets. So there you heard the speakers. Again, the volume is pretty good. They do distort if you crank it up a bit. And YouTube plays. Uh, the, the player is a little bit. This is the HTML5 player. This does not have Adobe Flash. Android tablets don't come with that anymore unless you want to sideload it. But uh, YouTube is a little bit more sluggish to respond and to, to, to stream up the video. But it's not bad at all. And for the camera, we're using the rear camera. Obviously, at this point, Ernie the bath toy back here. Hello. Right there. You can switch between front and rear cameras, control your audio recording levels, switch between video and photo mode. And we have some additional settings here. Resolution, capture mode, white balance, timer, grid. Basic settings, basic camera. Shot times are not too bad, but not the fastest that we've seen either. And if we switch to recording video, and just do that automatically. And for our video recording settings, you can see down here we have time lapse interval and we have resolution. And we we're recording at full 1080. Let's see how that looked. It was a little close for it to focus. Recording video. So we won't blame it if it's out. Let's do that automatically. That's a pretty good microphone on there. It does a nice job for that. So 
There it is. Basic cameras. The front two megapixel camera, not too bad. A little higher resolution than average for a budget tablet. Um, not the sharpest camera still, but not too bad either. It's certainly good enough for your Skype chats or your Google Plus Hangouts, that kind of stuff. In terms of software, in addition to the Google apps, a uh, Acer Photo app, their cloud storage app, a couple of little utilities like that, they preload Astro File Manager. The Amazon App Store is on board as well. No Office Suite is here, so you're going to have to purchase your own. That's not the end of the world if you need it. I mean, they sell for around 15 bucks off and on Google Play, so they're not that expensive. So how about gaming? Let's test out Real Racing 3 and see how this holds up. All right, now we're in Real Racing 3. That load time wasn't too bad. Tablet has a gig of RAM, by the way, and again, it has 16 gigs of internal storage. Colors are nice on this. May not be the highest resolution display, but colors are certainly pleasing and good contrast on it, too. Things look sharp as a result. plays perfectly well. Graphics might not be the ultra sharpest. You can see some of the lines there in the distance of the fence and, and on the road look a little bit like marching ants sometimes, but it's still very playable and easy enough to see. And the colors really are nice. And again, the contrast is pleasing on this as well. Not at all murky. So that's Real Racing 3 on the Acer Iconia A1-830 Android tablet. And lastly, we'll look at it as an e-reader. I know that's a popular thing for 8-inch tablets. First off, you can see the viewing angles here. That's very readable, other than the usual glare, because, well, it is a glossy display. It's pretty good in terms of viewing angles. Now, you could do facing pages like this, uh, given that it's a small display. I don't know if that's advisable. Obviously, the, the font by default is going to be a little bit small. Of course, you can enlarge it. And we're using Google Playbooks, by the way, but probably most people are going to want to use it in portrait orientation, where it feels much more like the book of a page. And you can see it's uh, taking a little while to think about that and render. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty sharp, though. For Given, again, the resolution, I have no issue with the fonts whatsoever. And let's make that a little bit bigger, so... Everybody can see that. <laughs> and that's certainly more legible for most people, I think, at this point. So it, it's, it's a nice enough looking display for reading. And page turn speeds after that, or they're just fine. So as an e-reader, yes. Now, if you want to use Google Play magazines or Zinio on this, honestly, that's when you're going to want a higher resolution display because those things are really meant for a bigger format. They're representing a magazine to you. And if you want to look at it in magazine layout, it's going to be a little hard on a smaller and low resolution display. But for books, it's a good, good tablet. Lastly, how about battery life? It has a 4,000 milliamp battery. Um, it's not wildly huge battery given the size of the tablet, but... We've seen smaller. Acer claimed 7.5 hours of use time with Wi-Fi on, and the screen brightness set at 50%, which really I like it a little bit brighter, to be honest. We're doing more like six and a half hours. I, certainly, if you keep the screen brightness even lower, you will get longer run times on that, and that's with a mix of use. We're browsing the web, doing social networking, playing some YouTube video for about 20 minutes, streaming a 45 minute episode of Netflix. So if you're doing less streaming video and certainly not too much gaming, you're going to get longer run times. So that's the Acer Iconia A1-830. It's available now. And if you're looking for an affordable 8-inch Android tablet at $200, it's not bad. But it has some strong competition from the 2013 Nexus 7 and even the Kindle Fire HDX. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to hit that like button.